What is going on this morning, guys and gals? Out for a little ride. Going to see if there's still a Ventura for sale over here. I don't know if you guys remember uh, a while ago, my uh, buddy bought a Ventura that was for sale that I found. It had been in a fire. Uh, it was a fresh restore. Two new quarters, two new doors, two new fenders, all new bumpers, all new trim, new motor, new tranny. And uh, the car caught on fire and burned to the ground. And uh, my buddy ended up buying the car and uh, never did anything with it. So I was thinking about maybe buying it and uh, maybe uh, doing something with it. I don't know. I gotta find his house. I'm sort of lost here, so we're gonna drive around in circles till I find this thing. It's on High Street, which I think is the other way. So we're gonna go back out on the uh, main road, come back into the neighborhood, so I'm not lost. So anyway, my buddy bought this car. Like I said, he really hasn't done much with it. He's not into it. I thought for sure he would uh, do something. He's uh, gotten pretty busy in life, you know. He's a lawyer now, and uh, he used to be a big-time street racer. And uh, he uh, got out of street racing and became a lawyer. How long will this lady sit here? Okay. And uh, he's got a buddy named Mike. His name's Mike. We used to call him the Mike and Mike Show. And uh, Mike's a Orange County deputy now. And uh, my other buddy, Mike, is a lawyer, has his own law firm, and he's doing really well. And uh, he's into fishing. That's what he. That's his poison. He likes to go out on the boat. And uh, he really hasn't had time to uh, mess with his car. I think it was a little more than he was expecting. However. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff that I could use on the uh, Nova, you know, maybe to speed that project along. I already have a motor in there, but this is a brand new Butler. Some of you uh, Pontiac guys, it's a Butler big block with a brand new tranny, a brand new Mosier 12 bolt in the car. I mean, whoever had the car spent tons of money. And uh, they were doing a little adjustment on the carburetor and left the... Uh, sight ball out and uh, the car caught on fire i see mike's uh, police car here so he's here they're like best friends forever they uh still hang out so we get a little look at it it's a little rusty it looks a little rough but uh it's still here so i'm gonna probably run down to the uh law firm and talk to him about it there it is right there no back glass got a brand new fuel tank in it it's got a brand new set of well wheels all the way around, disc brakes. It's got some really good parts. So maybe we'll uh, pick that up and build a hybrid. But, uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, watching the video yesterday. You know, those videos aren't easy to make. And uh, I can't, uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate the support on the channel and stuff. It means a lot. And uh, you guys have supported not only the channel, but my family and stuff. And uh, it means a whole lot to me. But anyway, we'll uh, go by and see Mike at the office and talk to him about that car. And uh, maybe we can accelerate the Nova back to life with that. But uh, this is going on today. I'm feeling a lot better than yesterday. Uh, Stress sort of uh, aggravates my situation. And I've had a little bit of stress lately. I mentioned my uh, brother was in the hospital. He is uh, not doing really good. He's uh, in a home. He's a veteran. And he has some issues. He's uh, at an assistant living facility. I went to uh, see him oh, about six months ago. And uh, I didn't make any videos because I was sort of uh, shocked by his condition. He was very lethargic, over-medicated, I thought. And uh, 
not very responsive. He fell asleep in the living room helping Andrea with some stuff. And uh, he just seemed to have a hard time functioning. I sort of expressed my concern with my stepsister. And she told me it wasn't my concern. And, uh, you know, he's my stepbrother. So I'm sort of powerless. My little sister, stepsister, I call her my sister, but she's my stepsister. She's sort of in control now. I uh, had my chance, I guess, with my brother. Uh, you know, we didn't see each other for a long time after we were kids. We went into the military together. I got out. He stayed in. And uh, I'd see him every once in a while, and I just sort of lost touch with him. We didn't communicate. That's how uh, blended families work, I guess. Anyway, his mom called me out of the blue, who I'd never met. And uh, even though my uh, parents have been... My mom had been married to his dad for 25 years. I never met his mom. And she finally called me out of the blue on Christmas Eve one year and told me Alan was in trouble. And uh, I always had feelings for my brother. You know, I'm the kind of person that even if we don't communicate, if we're friends, I'm going to be there for you. And uh, I told her I would go get him. I didn't know where he lived. She didn't have an address. She just knew he lived in St. Pete. Uh, you know, a lot of my family's in law enforcement, so uh, I made my way over to St. Pete, went to the sheriff department, and uh, they helped me find him. And I found him in a crack house, and he was in really bad shape, and I had to uh, threaten him to take him out of there and uh, hurt some other people to get him out of the house. But we got him out of there, and he came to live with us for four years. And, uh, you know, I've got my own battles I was going through. I, uh, he lived with us when I lost my arm or I didn't lose it. I blew my arm off and uh, had my arm reattached. So, of course, you know, I had lots of pain medicine when that happened. And uh, it was one of those situations where I just absolutely had to have it. You know, they were scraping my arm every day. It had, uh, not only was it broken and six locations it had a crush injury so that means when you get a crush injury is from an explosion the shock wave kills all your skin cells so they have to scrape the skin off daily until they can get to some viable skin and uh, it was very painful it was it was the worst time of my life well my brother was addicted to pain medicine and I didn't know this I knew he had some other issues and uh, he would steal my medicine. It was a constant problem. And uh, I got to where I didn't take as much as I was prescribed. So, you know, at first it wasn't an issue. And uh, I remember going to get at the end. We uh, worked at a shop together and he was helping me. And uh, some stuff went down. And words were said. And I ended up leaving the shop. He ended up staying. And. Uh, that was the first time in the four years that he was out of my control. He didn't no longer did he work for me, no longer did I pay his rent. And uh, when I turned him loose, he got into uh, the pain pills big time. He was taking them six, seven, eight at a time. I've never never had that issue with any kind of medicine. I've always take it, taken it as it was prescribed personally. But some people struggle with it and it becomes an addiction. And uh, they have to take more and more to get the uh, relief. Or they start enjoying the high. I don't know what it is, but he has that problem. He ended up stealing a whole prescription from me, and uh, it was a straw that broke the camel's back. And uh, we went our separate ways. And he got very heavily influenced by a you know drug dealer and got him into pills, and it spiraled out of control. And then he ended up in this home that he's in, and uh, back in the VA. Like I said, he was in bad shape when I went to visit him and brought him home for a week. And, uh, you know, his sister didn't like the fact that I checked him out and uh, took him somewhere. And she liked, the, liked it less that I was telling her that they were over-medicating him. And uh, I got a phone call the other day. I actually got a text and uh, went 
through a range of emotions. My mom uses, uh, you know, auto-correct, and I guess she was talking to the phone. And the message I got was that she had been stabbed and she was in the hospital. And, uh, you know, I was in a complete panic. And I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I found Andrea. She called my mom. And uh, my mom had, you know, the message had just got mixed up. But it was my brother that was in the hospital. He hadn't been stabbed, but they found him unresponsive at the home. They don't know how long he was out. He does seem to have some brain damage. And now he's on a ventilator. And, uh, you know, they're trying to, uh, I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know if he's going to wake up. It doesn't look good to me. I'm the only uh, only person that's been to see him. Uh, I was calling, and uh, the other day my stepsister sent an email out saying not to uh, call the hospital anymore. She told the uh, nurses not to give me any information. I'm not a relative. I'm only a stepbrother. And uh, so that's where we're at now. I'm sort of in a battle with my little sister. I'm not going to do it though because stress just uh, fuels my sickness and I'm not going to you know, be in that place. So all I can do is uh, pray for them and go visit them every once in a while. They let me sneak in the hospital there because nobody else has come to see them. And uh, I guess the nurse was less than impressed with my little sister, although she's in the medical profession. She lives in Jacksonville. She's actually closer to him than I am, and she hasn't taken the time to go see him yet. I uh, seriously don't think he's going to pull through it. But, uh, so that's what I'm dealing with right now with my brother. And, uh, it's day to day, I guess. I have to drive over there now to find out anything because I refuse to talk to her. And uh, I'll probably go over there in a little bit here, and then I need to get away, I think. Maybe head out to North Carolina. I was supposed to race with Noel this weekend. I haven't helped him with a car. You know, get it back together. We had to build the training for it. And, uh, he's dealing with that by himself. Whether he'll bring it to the track or not, I don't know. But uh, I just need to get away for a little bit and uh, clean my plate. So that's what's going on. I thought I'd take you guys for a little ride, explain the situation. It's never good when you're in a blended family and the family dissolves. You know, my stepfather passed away a couple of years ago and uh, it's been very uh, cold since he passed. Nobody uh, calls and says Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday and none of that stuff anymore. And, uh, I still have a relationship with my brother. I still have you know, a lot of feelings for him and it's hard for me to be cut off from him. But, my sister thinks it's better that way. Like maybe I'm a bad influence on him. But uh, I tried to do the best I could by him. And you know, when sometimes when people have an addiction, you can't help them. You know, you can give them all the help you want. I uh, built a room in my house for him. You know, I paid for an apartment for him. I tried all different types of stuff. He just can't be left alone. You know, his addiction's in no way my fault. Uh, you know, I have my own addiction. A lot of people think that I'm an alright guy and everything, but when it comes down to it, you know, truth be said, I'm basically an addict. And I've become that way because of the injuries I have. You know, I have to take this medicine. And, uh, I've cut the medicine back so much, I'm on the minimum. But when I stop taking it, I get really sick. And, uh, you know, one of these days I'm going to have to deal with that and go through it stop taking it. The problem I have is the pain so bad when I stop taking the medicine my blood pressure goes through the roof from the pain and when I go to the doctors you know they're like well you idiot you stop taking your medicine. So, I have a handful of doctors that say I'm dependent and then I have one doctor that's honest with me and tells me I'm an addict. And, uh, you know I deal with that every day. I uh, recently went to see the one doctor that reattached my arm. You know, I uh, blew my arm off with a wheel. I was blowing a wheel and tire up and the rim exploded and it severed my arm at the elbow. And uh, it was just hanging by the skin. Anyway, I went to the doctors, I went to the hospital. They 
rushed me to the hospital trauma center and I was screaming and yelling. They didn't know if I was going to live or die. So the last thing they were worried about was that arm. They told my mom and my uh, wife they were going to cut my arm off at the elbow. And I was screaming bloody murder. I mean, no medicine was helping me. The pain was just unbelievable. It's amazing how much your arm hurts when it's almost not even attached to your body. So they got everything out. They were getting ready to take me up to surgery and uh, remove it. Let me uh, order some food for the crew here. I'll be right back with you guys. Hi, can I help you? Yes, I need a large Coke and a styrofoam cup with extra ice and two sausage McMuffins. You got it. Thank you. I haven't been here in a while, huh, guys? Hello. How you? Good. How you doing? Let's throw the change in the bucket there, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let me get this stuff, and we'll get back to the story on the arm. So, so anyway the arm, uh, you know, they were going to wheel me off to surgery and cut that bad boy off, and uh, it was my right arm, so, you know, a lot of things go through your head when you're laying there. Thank you. And uh, I was no exception. I was thinking I really messed up, and, you know, how am I going to provide for my family and all that stuff. Thank you. You too. So this guy comes in and says, hey man, I'd like to look at your x-ray. I'm not your doctor, but I'd like to look at your x-ray. And I'm like, okay. And uh, him and the physician that was treating me at the time took a walk out into the hallway. And I heard a bunch of arguing out there. And uh, they came back into the room and he introduced himself to me. He said, hey, I'm Dr. Hudanich. Because I'm in my last month of residency at this hospital, which means he was uh, at the end of his teaching or learning career, I guess, and getting ready to embark on his, uh, you know, career. So he told me, he goes, look, he goes, I think I can save your arm. He goes, I'd like to, you know, try to save your arm for you, and I'll pay all your medical expenses. So I said, let's go with this guy. I was heavily sedated. And I really, you know, didn't take in the whole gravity of the situation, I guess. I knew I had really messed up bad, and I knew that you know, I was going to lose my arm. And I really never expected to use it again. So anyway, he uh, told me that he could fix it, or attempt to. He didn't know if it would work ever, or if it would be a flopper. But uh, he went ahead and fixed my arm, and... Uh, I'm indebted to that guy forever. You know, he didn't charge me a dime. So I go to see him periodically. I haven't been to see him in years. And uh, last time I went to see him, it was probably about six years ago. And he told me I was an addict. And I didn't want to hear that. So I didn't go back to him for a long time. However, since recently, I've ripped my shoulder. The ACL cut, whatever it is. Something in my shoulder got torn. And I went to him, he did some x-rays, you know, and uh, basically they called me back in the room. I sat in the waiting room for a long time. He's got a really busy practice, and I went in the waiting room there. And uh, the x-ray technician came out and did some x-rays on my shoulder, and he x-rayed my arm. They always x-ray it every time I go there. And, uh, you know, you're waiting for the doctor to come in the room. Well, they knocked on the door, and I opened, well, he opened the door. Uh, the whole staff was there, everybody that works there. And, you know, they all wanted to come in and touch the arm and, you know, feel it and look at it. And he couldn't believe that, you know, everything looked so good and I was doing so well. And it's times like that that I realize how lucky I am as a person that I'm even still here. Uh, you know, I've had some pretty bad battles, but I've fought through them. I still have a very good appetite for life. 
with my family. And I think my brother's missing that. And that's why he struggles so much. He just can't find anything that interests him. I don't know where I'm going with this video. I'm just uh, dazed and confused. I'm feeling better today, though. And, uh, I'm trying to decide what to do, whether to drive this car to races or take the motor home or whatever. I'm going to get out of town for a little bit and take you guys with me. Like I said, don't know if Noel's going to take the car or not. I know he got the training back yesterday. He called me and asked me about some fluid and stuff. And, uh, he's sort of been giving me a little space with my brother. I think Noel's... Uh, Noel's one of my best friends that I have in town here where I live. I have a lot of good friends on YouTube, but he's uh, he's the best friend I have here. And, uh, he's given me my space, and I appreciate that. But uh, I need to stop thinking about it for a while and just go do something fun. So I think I'll call him up and see where we're at, what we're doing. And, uh, go to the races and take our mind off of for a while. So, I just want to say thanks again for you guys subscribing to my channel and uh, liking the videos. Uh, you know, the content's been sort of lacking lately. Soon we'll get on to some, uh, some projects. The 2110, I'm accumulating all the parts for that. And uh, we got that convertible paint and some floors in. And, life comes at you and you got to take a break and you know, deal with it so that's what we're doing right now but i appreciate you guys hanging in there people are still subscribed to the channel i need to do a giveaway uh, i want to do a big giveaway for the 10,000 subscriber thing i need to i'm going to buy a real prize you know i try to paint stuff or give stuff away that i make and uh, that's all cool and stuff but you guys mean a lot to me, and you know, subscribing to the channel really helps me out a bunch. So uh, I need to think of something for you guys that's uh, really cool. And come up with a prize and do a 10,000 subscriber giveaway. But, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that I appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for the support when it's shitty. And thanks for hanging in there when the uh, videos are sort of uh, weak. So until uh, the next time, you guys have a great day. Don't forget to push that record button and uh, stuff like that. I just wanted to mention that it was very good to see Doug, Lakeside Rancher, comment on my video the other day. It's been a while since I've seen Doug. And uh, a lot of you guys come out of the woodwork when the shit hits the fan. And uh, it means a lot. So thank you.